Hi, I'm Mike Harrington, and in 2014, I embarked on a health journey resulting in my losing over 200 pounds on my own. Since then, I've been sharing my story and have become an advocate for healthy living. Welcome to Mike Inspires Me, a podcast show about health, wellness, and amazing people to inspire you to take charge of your life and your health. You can probably tell, for those of you who follow me, over the past uh, several episodes, I've been having some fun with the titles of the podcast and the images I've been using. But there is a point that I'm trying to drive home with all of this and why I'm using these sort of, I hate to use the word as bait, but um, to get people's attention. And the reason I want to get people's attention is the message I'm I'm bringing forth to people is about the experience that I've had, and hopefully through my journey, my experience, um, all of the information that I research, I'm able to give you something to help you think a little differently. Now, the the topic of health, the topic of weight loss, is becoming more and more important, especially as we navigate through these times with, you know, with COVID and other issues that are related to uh, health and obesity. And there's a lot of information, as you know, that's out there, which can be confusing. Uh, Some of it's downright just garbage. And there's a lot of people out there who um, think they have answers and they may. Um, there's there's a lot of programs out there. There are a lot of things. There are a lot of techniques that people use to take charge of their health or take care of problems that they're having, not just obesity, but any problem. And they may seem a little crazy to us at first. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if it gets them to where they need to be, um, that's so be it. But one of the things I wanted to Uh, talk about today around specifically my transformation was all the things that I had looked into prior to going off on my own and um, on a health journey, sort of the, um, the, 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 the checklist of things. And it's probably not exhaustive, but the, the, the main things that I had done that led me up to um, ultimately deciding to go on a lifestyle change, which is a big word, right? Lifestyle change path. And diets are certainly one of the biggest things that people tend to gravitate towards, especially what we call fad diets, right? Uh, The diets that are typically short term, um, often restrictive in certain food types, and, um, you know, can produce results, uh, but long-term are probably not good for sustaining uh, your health. I also want to get a little into detail about uh, bariatric surgery. Uh, Because I was in a certain category of obesity, weighing over 400 to about 450 pounds, I did qualify and discuss with my doctor about looking into um, bariatric surgery, and I did look into it. We'll talk about the details, what I did find out, and why I ultimately decided it wasn't for me. And last, I kind of tacked it on the end, talk about a few of the programs I had done too. I had been um, in weight loss groups, and I had done some other things. And uh, some observations, too, I've had with folks who've been in programs and talk to you about my opinions with them and my advice uh, about any of these things. So today I want to caveat, though, with all of these things, diets and surgery and programs, oh my, um, that I am not 
against these things, but I do have a preference. And some of them I may not recommend. And overall, I don't necessarily um, endorse uh, those type of things because um, I really am focused more on lifestyle management, lifestyle changes in order to take charge of your health. And that's my biggest focus. Having said that, you've probably heard me say this if you listen to me <laughs> enough, um, how a person gets there is probably um, least important than what they do after. And that's the theme you're gonna hear me talking about all through this and why I decided to talk about this today. So the big one, and you know, as I was about to embark on this topic uh, a, a little bit ago, I started to think about diets and I said, wow, I could probably spend at least just this episode talking about diets and probably a couple of episodes. And we'll see where this leads me. I may just do that. I may do a series on diets. I may do specific diets that I've been through and talk about them and my experience with them. But today we're gonna get a little more generic and talk about what my experience is. Certainly um, a guy like me, when well, I'm 51 years old now and uh, had been struggling with uh, weight issues most of my adult life, diets were definitely something that I had done and um, Obviously, they did not bring me the long-term results that I wanted, but um, I want to make a key distinction here, okay? Because I have had people say to me, well, Mike, you did go on a diet uh, in order to um, lose the 200 pounds. And I guess we're, we're mincing words, we're, we're ha and, and so, let me draw the distinction between what I did, because yes, I did have to change the quality of the food I was eating, the types of foods I was eating, the quantities of foods I was eating. And in some ways that could be seen as a diet. However, this was a more of a, permanent change. This is a sustainable change that I made as opposed to um, a traditional, as we, as we call fad diet, let's just say <laughs> low fat diet. We're not going to pick with <laughs> the obvious ones today, but low fat. Okay. That was one of the early ones that I had done a long time ago. Right. And, you know, back in those days, they were selling a lot of products. This is probably going back to the early 90s. They were selling a lot of products that were, were low fat and they were encouraging uh, those type of diets. And our minds was, if it has fat in it, it's bad and it's gonna make you fat. And so we went th through back in those days, buying all kinds of products and going on to certain uh, diets that you know were, had fat free, you know, you could buy your yogurt fat-free, you could buy meats, cheeses, just about anything. And um, you could still see remnants in that. Those things still do exist out there, low-fat and non-fat products. Um, but it was it was a big thing. And there are people to this day, the low-fat uh, movement does exist to this day. It's counter to the keto movement, which um, and, you know encourages the uh, consumption of fats and I do advocate for the consumption of, uh, of good fats, uh, mostly plant-based, but, uh, you know, our mind ha shift has changed since, since those days when it uh, came to, uh, the consumption of fat and, and what it does to, to our bodies. But what I found with, with whatever diet, and I, I had done, um, low carb too. I don't remember the exact one I had done. This was around the Atkins time. Well, a lot of those Atkins products were out there back then. Um, I have done uh, modified types of keto types diets. I've done um, probably, you know, most of the major ones that, that were out there, but, uh, you know, in, in various forms or um, restrictive eating, those types of things where, um, 
or or even huh i i'm not it's funny i didn't even think about this one i even did those uh slim fast shakes back in those days but let's let's kind of move forward so in all, in 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 most cases i either gave up so wasn't getting the results or getting bored or getting frustrated with those diets that i was on because i either felt deprived um and like i said didn't see see the weight loss results um or i did get there which sometimes i i did i would lo- get the results i i needed and um Actually, it's making me think of a story right now. And uh, eventually I went back to my old habits. And that's the key of what I'm, I'm talking about here is, okay, so it got me to that point, but I didn't make any changes after. And, you know, if you go back to where you were before, well, you're going to get the results you had before, right? You always did what you, you if you always do what you always did, you're always going to get what you always got, right? And uh, that, that was the case in, in every case. Um, yeah, I am remembering a point at which I was using the Weight Watchers books and diet at what time. And I think that was primarily like a low fat type, very restrictive eating, very specific foods. Um, I can remember getting very stressed out about trying to find the foods and trying to um, eat within the uh, guidelines. And um, although it did get me the results, it's like I said, uh, I, I can't remember what it was, one of my podcasts. Okay, so what? Because I didn't sustain them. So ultimately, they, they taught me nothing and they didn't do anything. And, and sadly to say, a waste of my time. So that's been my experience with diets. And when I finally came to the realization that um, in order to sustain my health and sustain my weight and, and uh I need to do a permanent change. I can't just, you know, uh, just lose it and then, you know, go back to my old habits and keep going on this, on this merry-go-round. And I wanted to find something, though, that wouldn't make me feel deprived, but still allow me to have that optimal uh, level of health. And you've heard me talk about that health and happiness is somewhere between broccoli and cookies, right? Because I didn't stop loving cookies. I said that many times. And I didn't want to give them up. But on the other hand, I knew that I, I, I had to change what I was eating in order to, to lose the weight and sustain. And I found sort of a happy medium. And I don't want to give myself a label because I don't believe in labeling myself or my eating pattern. But if you were to describe what I eat today, um, it would be what would be closest to... Um, flexitarian, which is probably mostly plant-based. I do eat a lot of vegan type foods during the week. So a lot of non-animal based products, beans, lentils, grains, leafy, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, nuts, seeds, a lot, a lot of foods like that. Filling, nutritious foods, which help me feel satiated. But sometimes it's ice cream and sometimes it's a hamburger. A real hamburger. Um, Not as often, but it gives me that balance so that if I do want some of those things um, that may not be best for my health, I I allow myself to have them. And that way I don't feel like I'm missing out or, you know, craving something that I can't ever have. I don't want to restrict myself from things. You know, and it gets good because, you know, when you're at events and things, you know, or, you know, with people and there's certain foods around and you want to try and everybody's enjoying it, you know, I can do it within reason. All right. This may end up, like I said, in turning into another maybe full podcast show at some point, the diets, but let's move into, um, I think I'll move into the surgery next. Yeah. Cause I have it on here. Surgery is an interesting subject and it's, it's hotly debated. And I am not saying that I don't respect surgery. I mean, in some ways I do feel like, um, if you're considering surgery when you're generally, I'm not going to say, you know, in a category of health, that's not too bad. I mean, if you're, 
50, 70 pounds overweight and you're getting surgery, if you want my honest opinion, I don't think it's worth it because of the risk. Um, if you're two, 300 pounds overweight and you've got severe health issues, I can possibly see the benefits. In my opinion, though, there's always a way to do it without. Okay. And let me explain before people jump on me because I'm not attacking people about it. I'm happy that people can find a way. I just think that this is, at least in my opinion, too risky. So when my doctor did tell me, or I asked him, I can't remember what it was uh, about bariatric surgery at the time he uh, was talking to me about my weight. Um, I went to a, a local hospital here that had a seminar on gastric banding. And we sat in an auditorium and had doctors and people come up and talk about the whole procedure, the whole program, and what it was about. And here's what I took away. And I hate to, to sum it up because maybe this is another one that could turn into another full podcast, although I'd like to do some research beforehand, um, is that basically with gastric banding, they're squeezing your stomach. So they're, going, they're cutting you open. They're coming in with a band. You know, so there's lap band, there's all kinds. I can't remember if it was lap band brand or what it was, but they're coming in and squeezing your stomach, okay? And what that's doing is it's reducing the capacity that you can eat, right? So you get full quicker. So you go and you eat. And so now you can only eat, I don't know, half as much as you used to before, maybe a quarter as much. I don't know, depending on how much they banned it, right? I, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's, it's not the point. The point is... I sat there and I go, they cut me open and put a band around my stomach. Okay. But I could eat anything, couldn't I? And yeah, so there are, don't get me wrong, there are restrictions with what you can eat. And I know that. And there are certain types of foods because, um, you know, with that type of surgery and, um, it, it, you know, you can't eat foods like you used to. But Here's where I'm getting the point I was getting at. I sat there and I said to myself, well, what if I took my belt and I tightened it around my stomach as hard as I could? Could I, you know, get myself to eat less too? And okay, so it may sound funny. It may sound silly, but I started to wonder myself, well, what am I doing here? What am I really doing? It's not, I'm not teaching myself anything. I'm not learning anything per se, I'm just forcing myself to not be able to eat as much as I did before. And okay, we can argue for hours about this one. All right. Well, Mike, yeah. So you're going to learn to eat less. Well, I got news for you. Um, even me to this day, I still, um, after losing 200 pounds, like to eat a lot. <laughs> and, um, and now the types of foods that I like to eat a lot of have changed. Uh, but back in those days, it was a lot more carb rich, you know, unhealthy fat, you know, those types of things, and a lot more meats and things. And I've reduced a lot of those things and now eat a lot more vitamin rich type foods. But I, I you know, when I was looking at the, the surgery, I said to myself, okay, and, and, and there was risks. They cut you open. There's risk. Now, other than oral surgery, I've never been cut open for anything. I've never had any sort of surgery. I, I know that's hard to believe in this day and age, but yeah, I never have, knock on wood. Um, and so that would be my first surgery and it was be surgery you know, by choice, right? I'm choosing. And I said to myself, all right, well, what am I doing here? Why, why have them do that? Why, you know, you know the other thing is, I, you know, they do teach you because they don't want you to gain the weight back. Um, they do teach you um, and put you through a program where you got to learn to eat better foods. And I said, well, isn't that really what I need? And so partially, yes, because when we've talked about that before, because what I was eating wasn't just the, the root of my problem. It was what was eating me. And maybe that's a good point here. Um, but I just I, I just wasn't comfortable with it. I when when I thought about it, I said, I, I don't really want them cutting me open 
to force my stomach to, to not be able to have the same capacity as it did before, because I don't feel like that's going to change my behavior, really. It's going to force the behavior to change, but the after, what's going to really change? I mean, you can't live your whole life, you know, with a gastric band. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it's just not a life that I was interested in. And then the restrictive eating from that standpoint wasn't anything I, I was looking for either. So I walked out of there and literally when I walked out of that, that um, seminar, I knew I didn't want to do it. And so I made the choice. I said, okay, I'm not doing this. I got to find the way to do this on my own. And uh, that's what led me to, you know, choosing a, a uh, or f- finding a path to a lifestyle type uh, change. And even that I had to invent on my own. All right. Well, I don't want to rush through this and we do, I am coming up on my normal 20 minutes time, but I did want to get into talking about programs and then, um, Hey, if we've got questions, we certainly can have people come back and ask me some questions and maybe I will do, um, segments on each of these things, but let's talk a little bit. I haven't done a lot of programs. So, and that's a good thing. Um, in some ways, cause I don't have a lot of time to talk about it, but let's talk about, uh, some other parts. So I, I belong to a weight loss support group. I'm not going to call them out but it was a, it was a um, fairly uh, uh, old uh, weight loss support group. So you can probably figure out who, who they are. They've been around a long time. Um, and I personally, for me, um, the group tended to be good and supportive. There were a lot of people in there. We had a couple of people in there who were former weight loss surgery folks who had, um, actually there were three or four that were in the group who had gained all their weight back and more. Um, the education piece in it was, was good. In fact, it taught me a lot. In fact, this particular group, (laughs) in fact, uh, was, uh, the one that taught me about tracking my food. And that was the thing that kind of clicked in my head about, yeah, I really need to be conscious about what I'm eating. So, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the program in itself wasn't, um, bad. And in fact, I do encourage you to look into some groups. Um, there's a lot of them good out there that uh, help out. This particular group, um, just to give you a, a, a sense of the dynamics in it. And, you know, I know not all groups are like this. Remember one year we had a Christmas party and the group decided to go to a buffet and all you can eat buffet uh, for the Christmas party. And especially somebody like me, and I'm sure most of the people in the group who has an eating disorder, finding yourself to, you know, having some self-control in those type of places. Now, this is not to say I don't go to buffets today. I still do. But I don't know that doing that as part of your weight loss group sets a good precedent for what you do. I, I just really feel looking back in hindsight, it was a poor choice in um, behaviors that we you want to teach and encourage in people. Ultimately, I I learned a lot in the group. I think it's a good way to share experiences, to learn with people. I think they teach a lot of um, good information and people have a lot of success. At the end of the day, okay, whether it's a diet, which again, I'm not a fan, but I'm not telling you not to do them. Surgery, same thing. Not a big fan of it, especially considering the risks, especially considering that the surgery in itself doesn't really teach you anything. It doesn't really help. Um, programs, I'm, I'm fine with overall. Most of them that I've seen out there are pretty decent. But here's the thing. What are you going to do after? If you diet and then you're done dieting, are you going back to where you were? If you have surgery, did you learn anything? Are your habits going to change? Was the risk worth what you what you did? And then programs. You know, here's the other thing with programs to consider. And I've said this to people. What are you going to do if this program goes away? You don't have that support group. You don't have access to it. Are you going to be able to do what you need to do to sustain your health without the program? Because sustainability is more important than anything. You know, why go through all this, as I've been saying, just to go back to your old habits? If you learn, 
what it is you need to do to find that balance between your health and happiness, okay? Your health meaning whatever it is you define healthy as, okay? What do you mean, Mike? What I mean is how healthy do you want to be? You want to be a health nut? You want to be, you know, exercising all the time and, you know, eating strict, you know, only uh, uh, nutritional foods? Or do you want somewhere in between where you can have some room where you can have little not so healthy treats and, you know, maybe have your lazy days or whatever. The point is you got to find what works for you. And I'm not going to discourage you if there's something you're coming to me and asking me about, but I will ask you questions and get you to consider some of these things that we talked about. Diets and surgery and programs can be useful tools if used for the right reasons. But at the end of the day, The lifestyle that you embark upon for the rest of your life, which will have its ups and downs, is ultimately the most important piece. I hope this has been helpful to you. Hope you're having a great day. As I always say, if you've got questions for me and or if you'd like to be a guest on an upcoming show, Mike at MikeInspiresMe.com is the best way to reach me uh, via email. And uh, hey, I do have, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to spoil it yet. I have a tentative guest coming on and actually um, an author, pretty excited about this. So stay tuned for a future episode in the next few weeks um, and uh, get out there and do something for yourself today. Stay awesome. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Mike Inspires Me podcast. Stay tuned for future episodes and check out some of the past ones you may have missed. For more information on me and my story, go to MikeInspiresMe.com. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Mike Harrington Official and on Twitter at Mike Inspires Me. Stay healthy and stay awesome.